Here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're here watching the big board, you know that because you're on the channel or you're on the blog page or you're on Facebook, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> and tonight, I thought what I'd do is have a look at a new scenario that's been designed by Brad Smith, who wrote Storm and Steel, which is a book uh, set in World War III, and he used uh, a lot of his gaming experiences to uh, envision and create a lot of the narrative that came out of uh, his uh, book. Well, the flip side of that is, uh, as he wrote that book, he then uh, came up with this particular scenario, which is pitting uh, some German uh, Leopard 1A4s versus uh, some T-55s uh, with the uh, very deadly Stabber missile uh, available to them. It's a very short scenario. It's only 15 turns, and most, as you probably know, if you've played MBT or Panzer, most of the scenarios are 30 plus turns long, because there's a lot of uh, you know meaning move to uh, the engagement and positioning sort of stuff going on. So this will be a little bit of a faster pace game, and will also be a little bit of a probably a more deadly game as well. And uh, lifted from the book. Uh, I had to make some adjustments to the maps because it was a four vassal design and it included map one and map two and they're both included, uh, sorry, they're both uh, on opposite sides of each other physically with the game. So I've substituted another map, map three, in the middle, which basically moves when we move all this stuff, you'll see. It moves this hill from being here more to the center of the map. Otherwise, it should be a pretty good fit. And we're going to ignore a couple of terrain features here and there. That should be it. So the idea is that the Germans, uh, in fact, the uh, the uh, First Mountain Division, uh, are of the elements of that, of course, are uh, defending the Czech invasion as they race towards the Danube. So that should be lots of fun. Let's see what the uh, preamble says here. <clears throat> yeah, the Czech. Czechoslovakian 19th Motor, Motor Rifle Division uh, is leading the advance into the Bavarian sector. And so while we only have nine, so basically a company of T-55s, uh, they are the slightly more uh, powerful, slightly more powerful uh, units perhaps than were in the book. So I don't believe any of the books, uh, T-55s, had the ability to fire the missiles. So that's nice. So that'll balance things out. And in fact, if you're an uh, MBT player, you will note with interest, let's see if we can zoom here a little bit, you'll note with interest that the, uh, if you look at the P column for APTS, which is uh, 6 and 64 there, and you'll see 6 and 65 there for the APF SDS, 100 millimeter rounds for these guys. You'll see that the ranges, which is the R number, the 6 and the 64, 65, uh, is the penetration value. Uh, and then we go across to short range, both at 12 and both in uh, actually 56 there. And the medium range the same, long range, well, there's a little bit of a benefit uh, by one hex uh, in the long range category. Super, uh, super tightly matched here, other than the Stabber missile, which is just a beast that'll basically penetrate anything it shoots at if it hits it. And uh, also the armor ratings are very equivalent. Uh, the TF, the turret front, 60, 66, 57, 60, 69, and 54. Uh, turret rear to hull front. Now here's a difference. Ooh, look at that. 28, 37, 23, 53, 68, 42. So that is, uh, there's a key difference. So that's gonna be subject to the die roll where, where we actually hit on the front. Uh, we really wanna make sure we're maybe even hull down uh, for these uh, 1A4s, that's that's not going to be pretty if you get smacked. The penetration rates are going to be pretty over the top there. So, so we've got an evenly matched force. We have 
uh, as far as tanks are concerned anyway. And then you've got these Jags and these BMP-1s that both have um, either spigot or a hot two missiles, which basically are gonna kill anything they hit, if they hit. Uh, you'd be, well, they're gonna penetrate anyway, they may not kill. Uh, so that, that's going to be interesting. There's not a lot of each of those. There's a limited amount. And once again, in the, in the book, uh, Storm and Steel, there's a, certainly a broader or larger number of enemy BMPs and uh, enemy tanks. And if things go swimmingly well for the Germans, we will we'll retire this company and we'll just bring a second company on and maybe we'll keep playing and see what happens right the idea is that eventually the germans have to retreat off the map anyway so let's have a look at that there's some other excuse me scout vehicles and there's a bridge layer and fun stuff like that we'll get into that later on let's have a look at the map i i one of the great things about games like this at the tactical level and even ocs is there's a there's a lot of hmm there's a lot of contemplation that can go on as you look at the map and assess the situation and the terrain where will the enemy come on where will you defend what hills do you want to start at do you want to defend forward or back What's the easiest route for the enemy to take to try and exit here? Because this is a straight, excuse me, straight uh, end of the map, leave the map type of deal. I've been, it's been a long, long, long day today. Uh, so you'll, I may yawn again. Uh, so so we've, got to, we've got to make some decisions. First of all, let's have a look at the offensive player, the Soviet, uh, sorry, the Warsaw Pact player, the Czech uh, company commander he's got to decide with a movement rate of 11 on roads that uh, what you know which which route is he going to take <clears throat> and the first thing we you know if I guess we should probably do is check and see if I can actually get off the board right but we won't do that right here on camera because you don't need to hear me sitting here counting hexes so uh, we'll assume that we can, within bounds of reason, get from one end of the map to the other. It's three maps wide. So we'll, uh, we should be able to do that okay. And because it's what, uh, 10, uh, these, these maps are 10 hexes deep. So that's a 30 hex map. And you know, so that's a straight run. So we'd be doing uh, seven uh, if, we, if we went overland and not on a road versus 11. So we've probably got enough enough uh, bandwidth and time to get from A to B uh, or thereabouts. So we've got to choose entry points and I'm thinking as the, as the Czech player that we want to cluster our forces, we want to protect the BMPs carrying the infantry as much as possible. We've got one, two, three, four, Five of those, I believe, six of those. That would make sense because there's six full squads with uh, nasty, nasty. What are they? Uh, SPG? No, I think they're sevens, not twenty twos. We're going to downgrade them to twenty to RPG sevens, I think. Yes. So. We're going to be doing that now. There's a side benefit here: is we could these guys have great range and great reach and great penetration. So, do we want to bring some tanks on first? Bring a platoon of tanks on first. Find out where the enemy is, then bring these guys in. Try and get in a decent covered position, and start uh, pinging away at the bad guys and forcing them to retreat. And then, uh, using sort of a bounding Overwatch mode. Uh, let's say we had, you know, an, a BMP, a couple of BMPs here, and maybe, you know, a couple here, as the case may be. There's a hill over on this side as well. Maybe we could uh, set up some here, and then we can bring our main force of tanks in and try and hustle down the road and come around the edge of this map, this side, or similarly down there. And we're going to count this as. Uh, this type of road, so 
highway or railroad, whatever you want to call it. I forget what the exact term is. So uh, we've got two choices and we're going to need to pick one, I think, but we may want to di- be a, you know, have a potential diversion by, by putting some forces over there. So that's, that's a rough plan, right? Maybe we, uh, we, we bring three guys on, let them uh, ping the uh, forces a little bit, uh, so we could uh, we could then, you know, use these this screening force. Well, there's a bridge layer. Uh, screening force to identify where the enemy is, draw some fire, and then use the BMPs to you know try and at least force the enemy off the high ground and off the the, the best kill zones, so that uh, we can advance more rapidly with the rest of the units. The goal, I think, is uh, the Soviets, the Soviets, the Warsaw Pact, have to win by 300 points as a minimum, and you receive the point value per unit uh, for the first 14 units that get off the map. So I'll have to check the, the point costs for the different forces. I'm going to imagine infantry and BMPs might be worth uh, potentially more than the tanks, but we'll see. So. That's the offense. Now, on the defense, what are we going to do? Uh, We obviously have a nice central location, but it's very obvious and potentially very dangerous. But I can start with, I believe, four units in a hold-down position, which is a great, uh, great place to be. Let me just look here real quick. Uh, where is it? Can't find it. I'm seeing that we can use some hidden units, but I could have sworn I saw a hole down here somewhere. Anyway, let's assume there are a number of units that can be hulled down. Well, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Because I would put the Jaguars hull down and, and potentially one or two tanks. But now I can't see this rule. Uh, here we go. It talks about them being in hull down, but it doesn't talk about how many there are. And I can't see it right now, but we know there are some. So that's, uh, that's the important part. Here it is. Oh, it's only two. Wow. Okay, that's bad. Well, then that probably means we're going to use the Jaguars and put them in hold down position. So, so putting some forces hold down here. Great arcs of fire, right? So from the hilltop, we've got uh, a shot at oops, anything coming on this way. We can take pot shots at, particularly if, we've, if we're using the Hot 2 missiles. Similarly here, once, uh, once these guys come along the road here and get up on this crest, <coughs> we're gonna have an opportunity to shoot or as they try and cross this open ground here, very powerful opportunity to put, uh, put some hurt on them. And that would be, I would say, somewhat of a setback defense. And then we could also press up with one platoon, probably here as a, as a first opportunity somewhere in this area to thwart or uh, dissuade the enemy from deciding to come on here and push them to come on this way and then we can get shots coming this way and shots coming this way. That may of course then expose us to you know alternative entry points for the uh, Warsaw Pact coming in behind us and potentially causing trouble. But forward, forward deployment potentially of one platoon or forward deployment of infantry in uh, the little Fuchs vehicles. So they could take uh, one shot, maybe two, and then bug out or one shot and bug out. That'd be fun. Uh, be happy for the, the West Warsaw Pact to slow down and deploy to try and beat up my infantry. Uh, but, you know, we'd be also happy to uh, shoot and scoot back uh, back into some more robust cover. So this hill, pretty important 
this village one is not considered to be here. Although, given how open this terrain is, we may want to give the Warsaw Pact a bit of a break and actually say that village is there. Uh, because on the other map, I, there's maybe some trees here or something like that. And of course, this hill is a little bit uh, off center in, in that particular on that particular map. And then, of course, final line of defense, guarding the roads. We've got to get, there's only one bridge here. These other two bridges are out down uh, where those green discs are. So a bridge layer may have to be deployed, which will uh, slow things down and open up opportunities for the leopards to do their thing. So we may end up uh, positioning, uh, you know, either infantry up front or one platoon of tanks up front and one here covering fire and one in reserve. Uh, that, that could be an option as well. So that's one of the fun things about uh, this particular game system and, and a lot of tactical games as well, particularly when you're playing by yourself and you're trying to you know, write up some sort of basic plan for each side so that you're trying to keep each other honest to, to the extent that you can when you're playing uh, solo. So I thought I'd share that with you. We'll get the, the pieces on the map over the next day or so. We've got a few things going on this week, so it won't be too much game time going on. But uh, we'll be looking forward to getting this up in the very near future. Talk to you guys soon. And hope you enjoy the little quick little look at uh, the maps and deployment for Storm and Steel. Did he actually give this scenario a name? I don't know if he did. I don't believe he did. I'm sure it's called something most excellent, right? <laughs> Let's just flip over this page here. Here it is. The Defense of Grafling, 5th of May, 1985. Uh, so there's that. All right. All the best, folks. Talk to you soon.